Hey guys, Nick here with another Code.org video. Before we begin today's video, I want to make sure that you have subscribed to me and hit that notification bell so that you can see my most up-to-date videos for Code.org and everything else that I make videos about. Uh, subscribing really helps out my channel, so I really do appreciate it. That's the easiest way that you can support me um, and help this channel grow and help more people get help with Code.org. So today we're going to be doing lesson 40, which is build your project, and this is part two to part one of a video that I previously made where we did this in Sprite Lab. So anyway, you can see a lot of code here. You can see some weird things that you've probably never seen before, and then you can see my little game that I built playing right here nice and smoothly. So let's get started. Today I am showing you the second part of the Lesson 40 Build Your Project in Code.org and uh, I'm going to go ahead and apologize if you can hear the thunder in the background. It's currently storming here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear it or not, but if you hear a boom, that's what it is. Alright, so let's get started. I'm just going to go ahead and run this so I can show you the game that I have made. So you can see I have a plane. I'm the blue plane and I can control up and down with the arrow keys and then you'll see I can go up out of the screen and I can go down through the bottom of the screen so that's not ideal I guess but you can see what happens when I get a coin my score increases by 10 and then if I hit another plane my score goes back to zero and that's basically it that I don't have an end game built in yet I'm gonna talk about that later and you can see I've used the uh, the rock sprite just to make clouds so they look like gray almost like storm clouds which I guess is perfect for today because it's storming anyway but I'm gonna get into how I put this together so that you'll have an understanding of how to do it by yourself because you probably won't want to copy my project exactly for fear of getting caught cheating anyway let's get started so I'll hit reset alright here we go so the first couple things you need to do you need to determine how fast you want your sprite to move which uh, you can just do that by bringing in a variable and choosing set speed and you can you know rename it to speed so that you'll know when you use it later that it is speed and you want to set that to one set score to zero because you don't want to start with a score unless you want to employ some sort of handicap but we're not going to do that at this level and then set background color I just made it sky blue so that it is you know like the sky and uh, here it is more important to give your sprites specific names so that you can keep track of them, especially if you're making a more complex game uh, where you would have multiple sprites and you might even have different ones with the same costume that do different things. So we're going to say make a new sprite called player with costume and I just gave it the blue airplane costume. And then I gave it the location. You give it an X and Y coordinates which is important because you want the sprite to be somewhere and I noticed if you put it at the Y location of zero it puts it like it lines up the center of the sprite like here is the point for the sprite so I put it at 30 so that the wheels are up above and then I put it at 100 so that it's you know not in the middle of the screen I believe this is a 400 by 400 square yeah, I think that's what it is. Okay, so and then uh, I made a new sprite called Cloud, and I put it at location 243, 123, and that's just, you know, just right there in the middle of the screen. And you'll see that the sprite Cloud begins moving west and loop, so you know you have north, south, east, and west, so west is to the left. And now you don't have this moving west and loop initially you just have moving west and the way I made the moving west and loop is you click edit on moving west and I'll show you that the code that I built into it okay so here we have moving west and loop and so I just told it what it's supposed to do move the sprite to the left across the screen and so here it says move this sprite which is the sprite to which it's connected 10 pixels west and then if this sprite x position is less than zero meaning when the sprite gets to the left side of the screen it will set this sprite y position to a random integer from between 50 and 400 meaning that you know I don't want the sprite to appear off the screen 
and so it's going to be somewhere between 50 and 400. Oh, excuse me. And then you want to set the sprite's X position to 400 because you want the sprite always to be sort of in the middle of the screen, like, like so. So the X position, just like that. Boom, 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 boom. Because the, here's the 400. So this is a 400 by 400 pixel square. So 400 is the edge of the screen, and then zero is the west edge of the screen. And so it's just going to keep doing this over and over and over again because of this if condition that I have in here where I say, you know, or this logic, I guess. When it hits zero, it's going to come back at the front of the screen. So then we can, you know, close this and you can rename it moving west in loop. And so I made another one coin with random integer between 300 and 400. And I guess I could have used a random integer for the cloud, but I just left it where it was. And then you want to do the same thing with the coin moving west in loop, make a new sprite called enemy with costume, location x100, y100, and then moving west in loop. And the cloud and the coin and the enemy can all touch each other, but it doesn't usually happen. And there's no penalty if you miss a coin in the game, so it's not a big deal. All right, so it says edges block player from moving. That's just to try to keep your player on the screen. However, that's the east and west edge and not the north and south, so it doesn't really do a whole lot. So then I set the coin size so that it was smaller than the plane, which just makes it look better. And then you can build in your controls here. So we have while up pressed, move player, and then you change your variable speed, which we set in the beginning to one, times 10 pixels to the north. While down is pressed, move player speed times 10 pixels south. So you could invert those controls if you wanted to make it seem more like an airplane. You know, you pull back on your joystick and you go up, push forward, and you go down. I don't think it's actually called a joystick in an airplane, but the term escapes me right now. All right, so here is where I did the scoring. You do your scoring by building a title screen into it and then linking that to an event and setting the variable score to whatever you want. I could make it plus 100, I could make it plus 5, whatever I want it to be. So, when the coin touches the player, it will set the score to whatever the current score is, so score plus 10. So then the next time you hit a coin, say your score is 10, it'll go to 20, 30, 40, so on and so forth. And then we have move coin 1000 pixels to the north. Well, why would we want to do that? Well, it shoots it off the screen very rapidly to do that. There's no way to just make the coin vanish, so that's the best thing you can do. And if you look at other tutorials for things like this, you'll see the same thing. And then we want to show the title screen. And you use this join here to join score, which is join this the text score with the variable score, whatever the current variable is. And you show it in that text. All right, and then the same thing for the enemy, except you want to do it opposite. You want to set score to zero. So I just totally reset it. Um, you could set it to, you know, score minus 10 or score divided by 2 or whatever you wanted to do. But I just set the score to 0 so it resets it and then you show the title screen score again. Um, the reason you need this in here is because if you just leave this in, it will show whatever your previous score was until you collect a new coin and you go back to 10. So here I'll unjoin this real quick. And you can see I've got 10... 20 and then I hit an enemy and you see my score goes back to 10 and that can be kind of confusing for people so I join this to it and reset and run and you can see 10 20 0 and I think you can get rid of like it's kind of concatenated right there it's just stuck together I think if I add a space after score that should clean it up a little bit yeah, there we go. So I actually what you're doing is called a concatenation when you're combining this term with this variable. But uh, I you know, you want to add that space there so it, it looks a bit nicer. 
So the only thing I have to add now is the end game sequence, which is basically just what I want to happen to end the game. Now, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is make it so that if you fly off, like if your X variable is greater than 400, which I should probably make it a little bigger, like 420 or something like that, 430, and... Oh, sorry, not your x variable, your y variable. If it's greater than 430 or less than 0, then I would make it so that, uh, you know, the game ends. It's game over, you lose, and you can start again. And then I'd like to make it so that if your score reaches, say, I don't know, 500, so that you have to collect 50 coins in a row without getting hit, then you know, you win the game. It says, congratulations, you win, and I would do that just with another title screen, and then I would stop all movement of the sprites at that point so that you would know that you had won and the game was over. But anyway, this is the code as it sits. Pretty much anybody could go in and build this structure. The real tricky part is trying to figure out what to do with your uh, act or your behavior, I'm sorry. So moving west in loop, and so you can, you know, rename that to whatever you want and then uh, you know building this logic into it to create the illusion of motion because without this you know your your character is actually sitting still and uh, the rest of the things are moving so it looks like your character is moving forward because of you know reference frames even though your character is actually staying in the same place on the screen if you notice you're not changing your X coordinate at all you're just moving up and down but it's staying at the same X position. And uh, the reason I have it sitting back from the center is to give you a little bit more time to react when you see a coin or an enemy. And so yeah, that's pretty much it, I believe. You know, this, this is not crazy complicated stuff. It's mostly applying what we've done before in code.org, but this little editing the logic is kind of new. Um, I didn't know that existed in code.org before I started doing this lab. I kind of wish they had done a lesson or two on building logic into Sprite Lab. I, I didn't see that anywhere in the code.org curriculum, so this is kind of just something you have to figure out on your own or find a video like this. And again, I ask if you're going to copy this idea, don't copy it exactly just to protect yourself. Um, you know, you don't want to get in trouble for cheating. Uh, just because you used a similar idea to what I used. So I think that's pretty much it. Go ahead and leave a like on this video if it helped you out. Leave a comment down below if you have questions or suggestions for future videos. And thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video.